Before arriving to this tournament, I knew that my most difficult opponent would be Jennifer Ju. You see, she's my age, but she has already been US Women's Chess Champion twice, and she has a peak rating of almost 2400. So she is a lot higher rated than me, and in general, also just a better chess player. I also had the black pieces, which made things a little bit more difficult, and so I knew this was going to be a tough game, but I had prepared quite a lot for this game, so I was feeling optimistic about my, my chances, or at least I was <laughs> hoping to feel that way. So I sat down by the board, we shook hands, and then the game started. Now I had prepared um, a line that I've never played before, and she started out by playing d4, which is what I was expecting, and I went d5, she played c4, and I played e6, and we were making these opening moves very quickly. I knew that she was going to play a line called the Queen's Gambit um, declined the exchange variation, which is exactly what I play with the white pieces too, and I've never really liked facing it, but I felt like this would be a great line to play against her. So she played knight c3, I played knight f6, and then she captured my pawn, and here I captured back, and we were making all these moves really, really, really quickly. Um, there wasn't really a lot to think about. She played bishop g5, pinning my knight, and I had prepared to play this move, c6, defending the d5 pawn, to later get out my bishop, and then, well, you will see what happens. But so far, I was playing very fast and I was feeling good and I was just thinking, yes, Jennifer entered exactly what I thought she was gonna play and I was feeling really happy. So she played E3 and now, I mean, I don't really know exactly what I was thinking about. <laughs> I was just gonna get out my bishop to D6 and it looks like it's a little bit weirdly placed there, but there's sometimes a lot of tactics towards h2. So I kind of, uh, yeah, I, I quite like this. Um, I, for some reason, stood up, and I don't really know why I stood up, but I think I just kind of wanted to stand up from the board for a little bit. It feels kind of nice to do that sometimes. I was taking a sip of my drink, and Jennifer started thinking for a little bit, because I think that she realized that I had prepared and that this was not what I typically play. I sat down by the board again, and I was just waiting for her to make her move. Now this is a little bit of a different note, but I'm really happy that one cannot notice how unironed my shirt is. My shirt was extremely unironed, un and I thought everyone would notice in my camera, but it's not so noticeable, so. <laughs> Do you iron your shirts? Be honest. Okay. She spent some time thinking here, and she ended up playing bishop d3, and now I was trying to remember all the theory, but I remember that I was supposed to play h6, and then after the bishop retreated to h4, simply castle. So far, I had spent like no time, and I was feeling really good about the position. So, after thinking for a little bit, Jennifer played the move knight e2, which is a move that is not so common, but it's a move that I was expecting. And it was in this position that I kind of mixed up ideas because I knew that what I had to do was to play a5, knight a6, and knight c7, but I forgot here that I was supposed to play rook e8 first. I have never played this opening before and I don't know why I forgot this. So yeah, um, I was really unhappy when I realized this after the game that I'd forgotten my theory here. But yeah, I went a5, and this is not a great move because, well, it's a little bit too early. I'm kind of committing to one plan too early. I should be playing rook e8. So I think that was why Jennifer kind of started thinking here. I think she was trying to punish it. So she played a3, and now once again, I have the chance of playing rook e8 without really committing to where I'm going to place my knight. But I was so sure that my knight was going to a6 and c7 anyways that I thought that it didn't really matter if I went knight a6 now or later, but actually it does matter and Jennifer would very soon show me why it matters so much. So I played knight a6 with the idea of playing knight c7 and so far I thought that everything was totally fine, however Jennifer would play 
a series of moves that would make my life very uncomfortable. So she cannot really castle right now because then I have a nasty attack with bishop takes h2, sniping down the bishop to the king and then going knight g4 check, which is really pretty. Um, and well, that basically wins the game. So she played bishop c2, which was a really, really, really interesting move that I hadn't thought about at all. And the idea is that she wants to place her queen in front of the bishop and then create a battery with the queen and the bishop and then just basically put pressure on my king forever. So I was really unhappy about this idea that she had and I started thinking a lot here. Like this wasn't just me thinking a little bit, this was me entering a kind of zen thinking, I don't know for how long mode, and I thought for way too much time here. I was almost making a move, but then I kind of took it back and I was sitting there really contemplating my choices, knowing that she was about to put her queen in front of her bishop and that this would be a really, really nasty duo. So after spending a little bit more time thinking, I finally ended up making a move and I simply played knight c7, moving my knight back. And the idea was that I wanted to reroute my knight to e6, which was also the idea that I had in my prep. It's just that once again, I had forgotten to make this move rook e8. So just like I expected, she played queen d3, now putting her queen in front of the bishop. And I pretty quickly played g6 because I needed to stop her queen and her bishop looking at my king. And now I was also threatening to get out my bishop and threaten her queen at the same time and if she lets me do that it would be amazing but she played this really strong move f3 which to be honest i hadn't really looked at too much or I, I hadn't really understood how strong that move was and here was the moment where i spent so much time thinking like i was calculating every single line possible i was thinking about b5 b6 i was thinking about like every single move that one can do I, uh, I was thinking for so long and I feel like I was going crazy in my thoughts as well but I ended up spending I think like 30 minutes here like Jennifer must have been so bored I just kept thinking and thinking and thinking and I mean <laughs> you can even see the guy in the background sitting there just being kind of bored I spent so long and I was going so crazy and then yeah, I was calculating c5, I was calculating b5, I was calculating all kinds of moves and at the end I ended up finding this idea um, of just simply going back with my bishop just because I didn't want to deal with all the problems that would arise after. So I should have played b5, instead I went back with my bishop taking away that pin. I was kind of looking around, I don't really know what I was looking at. <laughs> And I was hoping that she would do something crazy, but Jennifer just ended up casting. And now was another moment where I just spent thinking so long. I just really didn't know what to do. I really just had no idea what to do. I was like, should I play b6? Should I play b5? This would have been two really good options. Then I saw this crazy idea of sacrificing a pawn, which I thought seemed quite interesting. And I saw my time ticking down. And ultimately, I ended up going for this plan. So I ended up going for this maybe a little bit crazy move, knight e6. Now the idea is that after she plays e4, which is what she wants to do, because she wants to take control of the center and she might be able to play e5 at some point, etc. My plan was to play the move knight h5. Um, where I'm basically giving up a pawn, but I thought this would be really nice because I'd be taking control of the f4 square. Now, this was very creative and maybe not so good, but I was just freaking out because my time kept going down. I didn't really understand the position. I didn't know exactly what to do. Everything that I calculated seemed to didn't work. I didn't like the idea of b6, bishop a6, and queen d2 attacking my h6 pawn either. So I decided to just play something that is quite active. But it was really annoying to just be down so much on time, not really feel like I had a good position. It was just not a fun place to be in. So now Jennifer finally started thinking a bit herself and she ended up after a while taking my bishop, we traded and then she took my pawn and we entered exactly what I thought that we were gonna enter. So 
Now the idea is that after she takes my pawn, I wanted to place my knight on f4, having a really strong knight over there. But what I missed was the fact that this wasn't as good as I thought it was. <laughs> um, which is the really unfortunate truth because she actually gets a lot of, uh, she actually gets a lot of play. Um, one, at the, at, in the beginning being a pawn up, but two, she actually can start an attack towards my king as well. So she traded knights after knight f4, and then she went queen d2. Now my idea all along had been to play queen g5, but what I realized was that if I played queen g5, I was kind of scared that she would go knight e4 or king h1, and that it wouldn't really lead to anything. So I ended up ultimately actually um, giving up the h6 pawn and taking the pawn on d5. After she took my knight, I took back, she took on h6, and I realized that my whole middle game plan had led to me being a pawn down, which was obviously not so good. I also only had a few minutes left on the clock, and I was a pawn down, and I was just, I thought that this would be the line that would give me the most drawing chances, just simply being an h pawn down, because at least it's just a pawn on the rim. At least it's not one of the pawns in the, in the center. At least she doesn't have any past pawn or something like that. So I thought it was a good relatively good pawn to lose. I went, after she took on h6, I spent some time thinking, but I went rook a6 pretty quickly because I really wanted to activate my rook. And I thought that this would be good so that I could put my rook in front of the queen so that I could still keep the open files with me. She played rook e1, I played rook e6. I really wanted to keep that open file for myself. And then she played the move queen d2, which was really tricky because it was also threatening my a5 pawn. And now I started realizing that my pawns were actually pretty weak. So she traded, I took back, and then she played the move bishop a4, attacking my rook. And here I spent a little bit of time thinking, should I trade queens, I thought? Well, I thought I would just be in a losing position if my queens were off the board. So there was a crazy line that I could play here with queen e2 sacrificing the a5 pawn to later sacrifice another pawn, my b6 pawn, and be three pawns down, but at least have some activity. But I did not see this line whatsoever, and I don't think with more time I would have seen it either. So I spent some time, I ended up playing rook, rook e7. Here I was very low on time, which was obviously my mistake. I need to play faster. I am the slowest human being on earth when it comes to chess, but it's just... I love playing classical chess too much. Like, I just love thinking. Is, is, does that happen to anyone else? I don't know. Let me know if it happens to you too. But I just love thinking. It's so fun. After rook e7, she played rook c1, threatening my bishop. And I played bishop d7 because I thought that was the only, play, the only thing I could do. She took and I simply took back with the rook because otherwise my pawn on a5 would be hanging. Now, if she takes it, at least I have queen e3 check, which would be winning the game for me. She was trying to play this really quickly, I think, because she wanted to, well, put pressure on me, especially because I had less than a minute on the clock. She had like 37 minutes. <laughs> um, and she ended up playing rook e1, threatening my queen again. At first I was gonna play queen b6, but then I thought it was better to keep my queen close to my king. So I saw that after queen b6, she might have check and queen f4. So I went queen f6 to prevent queen f4. She played rook e5, threatening my pawn, or at least putting some pressure on it. Um, and I played b6, just to keep everything defended. However, in this position, Jennifer actually made a mistake, which was that she went queen h6, and I pretty quickly, without thinking that I had any other choice, played rook d8 to prevent her from going rook e8 checkmate. But I could actually, in this moment, this was a, a crucial moment in the game, I could actually have played the move rook e7, sacrificing my d5 pawn to go rook e2 and get some activity with my rook. But unfortunately, I did not consider this whatsoever. And maybe I would have if I had a little bit more time. But in that moment, I, I didn't consider it whatsoever. I thought that rook d8 was my only move. And this was actually a crucial moment in the game. Would I have gone rook e7, the evil bar would have been a lot closer and I would have had a lot bigger drawing chances. But it was a move that I never really considered. And after I played rook d8, she played h4 and I realized that now she was gonna start playing against my king and that my king was extremely weak. And I thought my biggest problem was just that I was a pawn down, but my pretty biggest problem was that I was getting checkmated. 
So she played h4, I played queen g7. I wanted to trade queens, she obviously did not because she wanted to checkmate me. So she went queen f4, I played queen of, uh, queen of eight. She played h5, I played rook d6. I was trying to hold everything together, but this position at this point was unholdable. I mean, it was, uh, yeah, it was completely unholdable. Um, I was doing my very best to find something. I was playing with little time. I went king h7. Um, she took and took, but now my king was completely naked. There were no pawns that could in any way protect it. And my only chance would be if we traded queens. But obviously Jennifer was too strong to trade queens against me. She checked me. I went king g8. She went queen d5, queen e5, threatening to check me on h8. If I went queen g7, she would have queen e8 check, queen f8, rook h8 check, sacrificing the rook but winning the queen. So I played rook g7, and after spending like no time thinking, she went queen h2, and now there was no way for me to both stop the checkmate and save my queen. So after she went queen h2, I decided that there was nothing I could do to save the game, and I resigned. So I lost my game against Jennifer Dew. Um, I was upset because I felt like I hadn't really played that well. It started out with me not getting, well, me kind of forgetting the theory that I should play in the opening and then not understanding the position and getting really low on time and not being able to capitalize on her mistake. But she is extremely strong and I got Andrea here on my side. Andrea, do you want to see how depressing my last position versus Bro, Jennifer was? <laughs> do you know how I felt the last three days? <laughs> oh, you're recapping the Jennifer? Yeah, I am. Oh, wow, respect. I don't want to look at my game versus Alex, but I'm going to try. But you know what? I respect that you're still looking at it. Thank you. Thank you. I wish you very good luck in the rest of your games. You will get a win, Andrea. I believe in you. I don't believe it, Anna. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, this is my game against Jennifer Jill, and these were her words after the game. Jennifer, how are you feeling after the game? I'm feeling pretty good going to see the rest day. Um, it's a good way to kind of finish this off and have fun today, tomorrow. <laughs> were you nervous before the game? I don't know if I was nervous, but um, I was like, I was trying to be careful with the opening just because... I don't know, like, what prep you might have cooked up. <laughs> I missed rookie 8. I forgot. I played a5 too early. I've never played this before. Oh. And then I forgot that I'm... So yeah, whatever. Yeah, I, mean, I had no idea what you might prep. So I was just like, I'll just play whatever and hopefully you can figure it out. You were so annoying with your bishop and queen. I absolutely... <laughs> I was so mad. I was like, no, how did I let her do this? It was so annoying the whole time. I but yeah. It's no work. I was like, this looks like it's nice, but I wasn't sure. Yeah. Well, GG's. When uh, when are you becoming a grandmaster, Jen? Oh, oh. <laughs> it's in the plans. It's in the plans. Hopefully within five years, because that is when the bounty is. <laughs> so uh, you know, keep tuned for the next two or three years. Hopefully, I'll get there. A hundred thousand dollars, right? For the next, is it five women? That next five women. So there's one already taken. There's one, so uh, four more. Four and I'm like, you know, I'm like one of the higher contenders up there. If I just like grind for the next few years, I think it's doable. All right, well, good luck, Jen. Wish her good luck in the comments as well. At least then uh, I will have lost to a future Grandmaster, which is, <laughs> which is great. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully. Anyways, big shout out to Jennifer Gio for playing such a good game. The tournament continues and I shall come back stronger the rest of rounds. Thank you so much for listening and watching my recap. And I'll see you all in my next tournament game.